Hi everybody, I'm Terry Schultz and I'm Legally Crafty, an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator coming to you from Alito, Texas. And um, today I have a couple of really cute cards and a fun technique to show you and I want to go ahead and get started because um, I don't know how long this is going to take me um, to do this on video. But thank you for joining me and watching my video today. And I hope that you like this technique. It's a really fun watercolor technique. Um, so before we get started, I want to show you what we're using. I'm using these dies. They are called the Mini Layered Blossoms dies. And they are in the annual catalog. Um, there used to be a stamp set that went along with these dies. Um, the stamp set's not available anymore, but I'm glad these dies carried over because um, they're really big dies. As you can see, there's two big ones, um, like this one, and it's got, um, that's this one here that I was holding. So it's got a little more, it's kind of thicker lines. And then this one that has, it's more of the outline. So we're using these dies and I'm doing a fun technique with these. And then um, we'll be able to make two cards um, from this technique that we're using. It's a watercolor technique. And then the stamp set that I'm using is this one right here and it's called Flowing Flowers, and this is in the Spring Mini Catalog, and I just love these fonts and these sentiments in here. Um, and these flowers are distinctive flowers, so we're gonna use this one, and you'll see how that stamps. It's really cool how those work, but we're gonna use a couple of these sentiments as well. So um, this is a really great little set from the Spring Mini Catalog. So, to get started, um, I think I'll flash you a peek at what we're making. So, we're doing this card and then this one. So, they're kind of opposites of each other, but I think they turned out really pretty. So, we're going to start with um, a piece of Fluid 100 watercolor paper. And I'm just going to um, place this die cut on top of this, uh, I think I'm gonna do it like that, on top of this kind of toward the top because we won't, we're gonna cut it down eventually, but I'm gonna, I've got a, um, a water painter, I think is what these are called now, and just some, a little dry baby wipe to um, wipe it off and clean it off. And I'm just gonna get my paper a little bit wet first. And I thought about kind of tacking this die cut down, but I think it works okay not doing that. Um, you'll see what I mean. So I'm just kind of getting some water on this paper so that it's wet. And I really like how this kind of turned out. Um, I wasn't sure. I tried it a couple of different ways. Um, and this way turned out to work the best. So what I've done is I've taken the reinkers, and the colors I'm using are Melon Mambo, Crushed Curry, Bermuda Bay, and Misty Moonlight. Misty Moonlight is um, an in color. Um, this is a 2020 to 2022 in color, um, and I love Misty Moonlight. It's a really nice blue color. And if you don't know about the ink colors, they, um, Stampin' Up! introduces five new ink colors per year, and they last for two years. So this is the 2020 to 2022, um, one of the ink colors from 2020 to 2022. So this color is retiring um, in May when the new annual catalog starts, which makes me sad because I love this color. Um, but I'm... Those are the colors I'm using, and I just squirted um, a couple of drops each in this little, and this tray um, <laughs> um, works really cool for this. Um, it's a really hard plastic tray, and it had some masks in it that I got from a friend of mine, and I thought that would make a really cool 
kind of watercolor um, tray for painting. So I just put a couple of drops in each in a, the wells in here and I'm just picking up some color on my brush and I'm just going to start out um, on the top with the Melon Mambo and you can just get a little bit more color. Um, it might be best to start out with less and then kind of build it up. I started out a little bit heavy handed on my sample. Um, and so I'm going a little bit lighter. And another thing I learned <laughs> um, when I made my sample was that you wanna make sure you're using a water painter that actually has water in it. So I actually have one that has alcohol in it for another technique. And I accidentally grabbed that one first. And so my first try <laughs> didn't work out so well because these inks are water-based. And so when I put a bunch of alcohol in them, it just didn't work well <laughs> on the watercolor paper. And I'll show you what that did, but... Um, so make sure you have water in your water painter because I also, like I said, have one that has alcohol and I didn't have them marked until I did that. So um, I'm just going over with the crushed curry now, making sure this is staying real wet. Um, and it doesn't really matter kind of how big you get it. And I'm then I'm just kind of squeezing the water out and making sure I get all the color out before I go to the next color. And ideally you might want to let the previous color dry before you start um, putting the next color on in case they kind of overlap. But um, I'm not taking the time to do that today. And I think uh, none of these, I'm pre being pretty careful not to overlap them too much, but they're not really getting muddied up, so it's fine. And you can put as much or as little color on there as you want to. Um, and as you can see, I went in rainbow order on this. So the pink first, yellow, green. This is a green color, the Bermuda Bay. And then um, the blue. So let me just clean this off and get... Um, the blue, and we'll get that painted on there. I'm trying to get some water squeezed in here to water this down a little bit better because I think I'm picking up a little bit too much. I'm not real experienced with watercolor, so I don't feel like I'm super good at um, watercoloring, but uh, I've seen so many beautiful projects done with watercolor. I'm going to try to get better at it. Um, so it works pretty well just to hold the die cut down, I think. And I think I had to get this just a little bit darker. We're going to cut this piece down, this watercolor paper piece, um, and once we get it dry. So I think that looks pretty good. I love this color combination. It's really bright and happy. So I'm gonna set that aside. And now, um, if you pull this up, what you get is kind of the outline there. And then what we're gonna do is I've die cut the outline piece in crushed curry. And we're gonna just overlay that on top of here and I love, I've got that upside down. I love how once you get the outlines on there, these inside of the flowers um, with the watercolor just look so pretty. And it doesn't matter if, you know, you didn't get, if you kind of got over, like filled in some of the white space because it's going to look really pretty anyway. So, and I left the little center pieces in uh, in here in this one. They're kind of a pain to knock them all out and I did that on the first one and I thought I'm gonna try it with them in here 
on this one and kind of see how that goes. So I'm going to go and dry this off with my heat gun just to get this dry a little faster. So hold on. I think that's dry. I see I've got a little bit of blue up there, but I think that's gonna be okay. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this piece on here, and then we're gonna cut it down. I think that'll work better. Um, I did. That's how I did it before, and I think that works fine. So to glue this on here, because it's really thin lined, I'm gonna get out my silicone craft mat and you can see I've been using glue on it and if you've got glue on it the glue doesn't stick to it so you can just rub the glue off and it'll come right up so it's a really good tool to use when you need to put glue on um, some of these thinner pieces so I'm not gonna you can see I was being messy today. I'll show you what happened when I used alcohol accidentally <laughs> instead of water with those inks. So that didn't work very well. So I'm gonna see what I can do with that piece later. But just make sure you've got water in your water painter and not alcohol if you're trying to do water painting. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on here. And then I've got this upside down and I'm just taking a sponge. You can get these in my online store and I've just cut it in quarters and I use it to just tap some glue onto these pieces that are have really thin lines and that works really well. So, um, and then it gets, it'll glue down to the watercolor paper. Let me make sure I get this right here. And I'm just gonna glue that right on the top there. Ooh, shifted it a little bit. And the good thing about this liquid glue, a couple good things, I like to use the liquid glue most of the time because it dries clear and you get a little bit of leeway um, to move things around, so. See how those centers look? I just love how those look with the outline on it. I think that's really pretty. So I'm gonna take this piece and my paper trimmer and I'm gonna trim this down to, um, it's five and an eighth tall. I got a little bit of white space at the bottom, but I think that's fine. And then I made it um, <coughs> three and seven eighths wide, but I want to, four and a quarter is the um, width of a card. So I'm gonna cut this down to about four, uh, let's do four and three eighths on this side, maybe four, just under four and a half. And see that, we can trim that off though. And then let's see, where's three and seven eighths over here? So, maybe not so much off of this side. 
I'm just trying to get a good, um, a good center pick of this flower. It's flower die cut, so um, this is about. It's still too wide. I'll just take. take a little bit more off of here so and then you might be able to use these little strips for something else I like to keep those little strips um, in case I find something to do with them so I've got this to three and seven eighths by five and an eighth and I'm going to I've got a card base of Misty Moonlight, and it is five and a half by eight and a half, and I'm just going to fold that right in half and give it a good crease with my bone folder, just like that. And um, I'm trying to remember how I did this here. All right, so I'm just going to glue this right down on my card front. Um, and I'm just going to use liquid glue here. And once you get this watercolored piece done, this card comes together actually pretty quickly. Um, because that, making that watercolor background is the hardest part of this card. Um, and then my sentiment... Um, let's see how to strip. I guess this is it. I am using the Just a Note sentiment from the Flowing Flowers um, stamp set. And I am stamping that in Melon Mambo. And... This piece here is, I think, about half an inch, maybe just a little bit over half an inch wide. And I'm just going to stamp that down. And I don't want to rock it um, when I'm using the rubber, red rubber stamps, because sometimes when your stamp sets are real juicy or your ink pads are real juicy, you can get a little bit of ink. On the edge here and if you're not um, if you don't notice that and you rock your stamp you can get kind of a halo around your image which isn't the end of the world but um, sometimes you want a clean image so I'm just cleaning this off using my simply chamois it's just a chamois that you just keep wet with water and you just rub your stamp on it and it cleans it right off and it's really nice so I'm going to cut the end of this. I'm just angling it um, just like that. And I'm just going to put this on right about there. And I'm going to pop this up with dimensionals. So um, then I'm going to use some ribbon on this one. Um, I'll get that out in just a minute. So I'm just popping this up with three dimensionals on here. So the sentiment is a little popped up. I can get these off. Today is Saturday, February 26th. And it is my mother-in-law's 87th birthday today. She lives in Iowa. So I'm just gonna put that right there and I'm just gonna cut this off using the edge of the card as my guide. So that goes right up to the edge of the card. I'm gonna close this up for the time being um, so I don't get a mess. So I've got that on there and then I've got a piece of, this is the cotton ribbon combo pack. Um, and it's part of the New Horizon Suite in the annual catalog. And I am just tying this 
um, in a bow. I don't know if I have enough ribbon here. I just had this piece, but I can get another piece if I need to. Um, anyway, so my mother-in-law lives in Iowa. I live in Texas, as I said at the beginning. So um, we actually haven't, well, I haven't seen my mother-in-law in, gosh, two years or so. Um, because she's been in Iowa and hasn't come down here because of COVID. But my husband um, and his brother, who also lives down here in the DFW area, um, flew up to Iowa this morning um, to spend her birthday with her and then she is coming back with um, with them tomorrow and she's gonna stay with us for I don't know how long indefinitely I'm glad she's um, coming down here to stay with us um, she's been staying with my one of my sisters-in-law both of my sisters-in-law live in Iowa and so they're um, close to her. She's been staying with one of them. And um, we're just giving my sister-in-law a little break to have her down here with us. And we're really happy we can have her down here with us since we haven't seen her um, in a little while. So now um, to finish this card off, I'm using these polished dots. Um, and these are in the spring mini catalog. If you need a catalog, um, just email me or um, let me know. I'd be happy to send you a catalog um, and have you purchase Stampin' Up! products from my online store. Um, I would love to be your demonstrator and get your business. Where did that go? Oh, there it is. It escaped me. I love these little polished dots and I'm just putting a few of them kind of up here on the top. And um, now it's sticking to me. So there we go. And that's, oh, I gotta do the inside. So I love these polished dots. They're clear and then like a petal pink color I think is the other color, but um, they're just really pretty little gems to add to a card. So for the inside of this card, I am stamping this image from the stamp set and I'm using the Melon Mambo again. We have really several really nice pink colors. Um, polished pink, which is an in color, for 2021 to 2023 is a lovely pink color. Melon Mambo is um, one of the in one of the color families in the Brights color family, so it's available. <coughs> excuse me, all the time. And we also have Magenta Madness, which is a 2020 to 2022 in color, so it is retiring. Um, so some really nice pinks. So isn't that image nice, how that stamps? Let me just clean this stamp off real quick. And um, get this into the inside of the card and we'll move on to the next card. So I think we're doing pretty well. Um, uh, I hadn't made any videos for a long time. Um, I posted one earlier this week that I made a few weeks ago with some celebration um, items and celebration is ending on Monday, February 28th. So if you've, there we are so many um, great stamp sets and beautiful paper available in celebration. And if you wanna get any of those, um, jump on and get them right now because their uh, celebration ends Monday at midnight at the end of the day. So I just love how this turned out. It's so pretty. I just love how that watercolor in the middle of there looks. I think it's so pretty. And that's an easy little note card just to send a note to somebody. And then we have this piece. 
left, which is the piece that we used as our mask. And so I thought I would make a card with this one as well. And so um, I'm making just a real simple, easy card. I've got a piece of thick white paper and I'm going to score it. This one is four and a quarter by 11. So I'm um, doing a top fold card for this one. So I'm gonna score it at five and a half. Make sure you use your scoring blade when you're scoring um, and not your cutting blade <laughs> if you don't wanna cut. That's a great thing about our trimmer is you get both a scoring blade and a cutting blade. And um, that's just really handy to have both of those on the trimmer. Didn't really score that well, but I think I think we'll be fine. So I'm going to glue this piece right up here, like towards the top of this card front. And I'll have to cut off some pieces of it, but I'm not I'm not gonna glue it down yet. I'm gonna set it there so I can put my sentiment down here in the lower right hand corner. And I'm gonna do the thank you sentiment this time from the stamp set. And um, you can see I got a little bit, I don't know if you can see, I got a little bit of ink on the edge there. So I'm just gonna wipe that off and then be very careful not to rock this stamp when I stamp it down. So I'm gonna stamp this in the corner right here and that looks great. I love that font. Um, it actually looks blue on the screen to me, but it's pink. I'll show you that it's pink. So, yeah. Well, yeah, it's pink. Believe me. Um, I hope it looks pink to you. So, um, this is my... Hopefully I'll get this video posted pretty quickly. Um, it took me a few weeks from my last video, but I hadn't posted anything in about a year. Um, and that's because 2021 was very challenging. I know it was challenging for a lot of people, but um, I feel like I was extra challenged in 2021. Um, a good thing that happened is my daughter got married. She just, she and her husband just had their first anniversary. Um, so I can't believe that they've been married a whole year already. Um, they were high school sweethearts. They were in band together in high school. Um, and they've been together a long time. So uh, my daughter is about to turn 23 and she's our youngest. Now I'm just putting some liquid glue on the back of this to glue this onto uh, the front of this card. And I'm just going to kind of turn it a little bit. So this piece appears up in the corner and then just glue it down. And then you can see it's hanging off the edge. So I'm just gonna take my scissors, which I put over here and just cut those off. So our youngest, so she's, um, she's our youngest. We have four kids, four children, <laughs> all grown since she, uh, she's our youngest. And she's almost 23. Um, my husband and I were a blended family so he has two, a son and a daughter. His son is 38 and lives in LA and is um, a screenwriter. And um, his daughter is 31. She just turned 32. And um, she and her husband live in Norman, Oklahoma. They did live in Arlington, Texas. Um, they just moved to Norman last summer, and it's been great for them. Um, they're doing really great there, and they love it there. Um, and they have a three-and-a-half-year-old son, so we miss our grandson. We don't see him as much. Um, this is Wink of Stella. I'm going to put a little bit of Wink of Stella on the die cut here. 
just to add some sparkle. And then I'm gonna try a little bit of um, splatter. What's it called? Splatter? I don't know what I'm trying to think of. Um, so I'm just adding some sparkle to this card here. And I'm doing it kind of backwards from what I did the other one because I put the gems on before I did the Wink of Stella in the other one. But it doesn't matter what order you do it in. Wink of Stella is just a pen that's basically paint on glitter, I guess. Um, and it just adds some really pretty sparkle to your projects. And I like the look that it gives this project. It's really hard to see it on camera, though. So, um, and then I'm adding these opal rounds, which are in the annual catalog. And these are so pretty. Um, they come in two sizes. And I'm just adding some of these to the centers of my flowers here. Um, some big ones and some smaller ones. And I'm trying to see where I put these right there. And I put one right here. So I think that looks really great. I love how those add um, some dimension to the card. And then what I'm trying to do with this spritz, spritz, splatter, I don't remember what to call it, is I'm just taking a Stampin' Write marker, and this is a Melon Mambo, and I'm just flicking some color onto here, just a little bit of, um, just one more. It just adds a little bit of splatter to the card. Um, and I didn't put anything on the inside of this one. So that's two cards with that one technique. You can use your, um, your stencil or your mask or however you want to call it. Um, you see how I got a little bit more heavy handed on the pink on this one. I like the lighter pink. What do you think on the one we just made? Um, so those are our cards today. And I think that's a really fun technique and I think it turned out really pretty. Um, again, this die set, um, you might miss it because it's not with a stamp set in the annual catalog, but it's a really great die set and it's got a couple of other little flowers um, in the dies as well, but they are really great to work with. So um, that's all I got today. Thank you for watching. Thanks you for hanging out with me on this rainy Saturday in Texas um, and cold Saturday. And I hope you're having a great weekend and I will see you next time. Bye.